Hello students, so welcome back to the Inset 25 series and today we would be discussing the 13th topic that is the Robson Scope. For those who are new to this channel, I am Dr. Gayatri, your OBS and Gain faculty. Let's have a look at this previous year question. It is a pretty clear and straightforward question on Robson Scope but I heard that many of the students find the Robson Scope a bit mind-boggling because you have to remember a lot of things in it and sometimes it can be a bit confusing but let me help you out with some tips and tricks so robson was devised so as to classify all women into categories 1 to 10 which is mutually exclusive the who has proposed the robson classification as a standard method of assessing, comparing and monitoring the cesarean section before going to the classification i want you to remember sick S I C S is for spontaneous labor, I is for induced labor, and C is for cesarean section prior to labor. So let's study 1 to 4 together. 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1 and 2 is for a nulliparous female, 3 and 4 is for a multiparous female. So let's write sick here S I C 1, 2 A, 2 B. That is nulliparous female, spontaneous labor 1. 2A again nulliparous female but it is an induced labor. 2B it is a cesarean prior to labor. Similarly 3 and 4. 3 is for the spontaneous multipara. 4 again A and B. A is induced and B is for a cesarean section prior to labor. All these are for singleton woman cephalic presentation. Now coming to 5. So the letter 5 is similar to an S of section. We usually call this cesarean section as just section many a time. So you can remember 5 it is similar to an S. It's for section. So all women with a previous cesarean section, again singleton and cephalic, comes under 5. Next is 6 and 7. So among these all drops and classification, here 6 and 7 beats may are na? They are in the middle, right? Beats or middle. So, ye dono beats mein aara hai and those two are for breech presentation. So, 6 and 7 is for breech presentation. 6 is for a nulliparous female and 7 is for a multiparous female. Next is 8. In 8, you can see that there are two sacs which can accommodate two babies. So, 8 is for a multiple pregnancy. 8 is for a multiple pregnancy. Next 9 and 9 is for all abnormal presentations. It can be either a transverse lie or an oblique lie. All the abnormal presentations comes under 9. 10 is for any period of gestation which is less than 37 weeks. All singleton pregnancies which is less than 37 weeks comes under 10. So from 5 to 10 all can be subdivided as A, B and C. Just write the mnemonic sick. A is for spontaneous labor, B is for induced labor, and C is for cesarean prior to labor. Let's just summarize the Robson once more. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 comes together. 1 and 2 is for a nulliparous female, 3 and 4 is for a multiparous female. 1, 2, sick. Spontaneous labor is 1. Induced and cesarean prior to labor comes in 2. It is the same case for 3 is similar to 1, 4 is similar to 2, except that it is for a multiparous female. Alright, 5, the letter 5 looks like an S, so it is related to section. All women with previous section come under 5. 6 and 7, ye dono letters beats me are so this is for breach. Beats me are letters for breach. So 6 and 7 is for breach. And 8, it has 2 sacs, 2 cavities inside. So, this is for a multiple pregnancy. 9 is for all abnormal presentations. 10 is for anything that is less than 37 weeks. All singleton pregnancies less than 37 weeks would be included under Robson 10. Hope that makes it very easy. And you will be able to answer any question that is going to come under Robson's in the future. Let's come back to the question. So, the correct answer is A. So we would be back again with another important topic. Please do subscribe so that you are notified when the next video comes. So until we meet next time, bye-bye.